Jeffrey H. Fisher, who joins us from Vienna. He's a retired Air Force colonel and an international security expert. Really good to have you with us, uh, Colonel. The United States here clearly sees what's happening in the Red Sea as a matter of urgency, not only for Washington, but uh, for other Western powers as well. But you would think that the last thing the Biden administration wanted was to be drawn into a, a potential conflict. Uh, what is the feeling in Washington, do you think, particularly in the White House? Is there an appetite to really uh, quash these attacks in the Red Sea? Uh, thanks for having me. It, to be fair, that's a really good question, right? I, I think when you look at the National Security Council and you look at Jake Sullivan, uh, there there is this desire to not escalate. There, there, you know, we, we've seen the Washington response in Ukraine, where they're, you know, still refusing to to send U.S. F-16s. They're refusing to send ATACMs because they're they're fearful of escalation with Russia. We have the same thing with Iran. We have the same thing in the Gulf. There's this is this is a, a an administration that's built on the the construct of fear of escalation. Uh, however, you also have a situation where you know at the southern tip of the the Red Sea, right on the Yemen coast, you have a, a, a strait that's only 19 miles wide. And and as I said after the first strikes on your show, and I appreciate you having me then, you know this was an issue between air power and sea power. And uh, the Yemeni uh, Houthis have to control the sea uh, and they have to control their air. And I'm not so sure they can do both. And we're, we're on our fourth set of strikes right now. And it's very clear that, that the Houthi rebels are going to have to find some way to control their airspace if they want these uh, strategic strikes to stop. Yes, yeah, so now in terms of the ongoing conflicts in uh, Ukraine and in Gaza, we know there's already a, a bit of a backlash among US lawmakers about uh, Washington's continued support for the conflict in Ukraine, with some uh, members of Congress pushing back uh, against the delivery of more weapons, more aid to Kiev. Uh, but this particular front in the Red Sea could have potential implications on the cost of living in the United States if it does continue to affect uh, the passage of goods through the Red Sea. Uh, do you think uh, there is more of a desire, I guess, uh, against uh, among some skeptical lawmakers to swiftly address uh, the attacks in the Red Sea? Sure, uh, you're, you hit the nail right on the head, right? This is an issue where, you know, the, globally we've had a, a significant recession, we've had massive inflation, we, we're coming out of COVID. Uh, we need to get the, the global economic engine running and now you, you've put a significant damper on the ability to distribute and sell commerce and goods. That, that's that's a significant problem. And now you're showing the exact image I'm talking about, that that strait is only 19 miles, 30 kilometers wide. So at, at, if, if a ship's going down the middle of that, from launch of a missile to the point that it impacts a ship is roughly around one to two minutes. So your reactive time is really, really short. What the United States has actually done, though, in, in these four strikes that, that I think is perhaps impressive or interesting for your, your audience is, they're clearly getting some real-time intelligence and near real-time ability, actual intelligence to find when the uh, Houthis are loading up missiles, where their missile launchers are. They're trying to move them around, and you know we're on our fourth strike in under a week. So that's it's pretty impressive how quickly they're able to to gather intelligence, put that into targeting package, and then commit to a strike. Okay, Jeffrey H. Fisher, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks as always for sharing your analysis with us.